Frank, a 200 IQ boy, fooled an FBI agent, and stole $5 million, printing fake checks, creating money out of thin air. How did that happen? Let's deep dive, to figure it out. At the beginning of the movie, Frank William Abagnale is invited to a game show called, To Tell the Truth. On that show, when a girl asked Frank a question, who caught you? He said his name was Carl Henratty, he worked for the FBI. Then scene shifts to the future, Carl speaking to the French police, he has the orders to see Frank Abagnale. Carl is taken to prison by the French police, where Frank is being kept. When Carl read the extradition articles, Frank coughed, and according to the European Court of Human Rights, Carl requested assistance. The policeman ignores him, but as Frank collapses, Carl summons a doctor for assistance. They transport Frank to the hospital ward, where he attempts to flee but is apprehended by police. The scene shifted to six years earlier at the New Rochelle Rotary Club, where Frank William Abagnale Sr. is announced as a lifetime member of the club by his friend, President Jack Barnes. In front of the audience, Frank Sr. related a story about two mice that got stuck in a pail of cream. One mouse died, but the other one churned the cream into butter and crawled out, in that he claimed himself as a second mouse. Following his return home, his son dances with his mother, Paula, and Frank tells him a story about how he met his wife, Frank and Paula then dance together. The following day, Frank wakes his son up for a meetup and stops at a shop. There, he lies to a woman named Darcy that he needs a suit for his son for a military funeral. Later, Frank Jr. stops the car, and his father tells him not to go anywhere else, even if the police say so. Here, it is shown that Frank Sr. seeks a loan at Chase Manhattan Bank. However, due to outstanding IRS difficulties, the bank refuses to lend to him. He is forced to sell his car and home and relocate to a modest apartment. When he saw his son frying pancakes the next day, he inquired about Paula with him. He informed him that she is seeking employment. Frank said that we're not going to have pancakes on my son's 16th birthday. He informed his son that he had opened a checking account and deposited $25 for him. French Jr. walks to school in uniform and gets bullied for looking like a substitute teacher. That annoyed him, and he tried to pose like one, and make the bully believe and told him to read some French out loud and embarrass him in front of the class. He also uses his imitation to deceive the actual teacher. This goes on for a few weeks, but the school eventually discovers how Frank is acting as a substitute for Mrs. Glasser's French class. One day he finds Jack Barnes and his mother alone in the house, he finds it fishy, to which his mother told him not to tell his father. After a day or two, he learned about his parents' separation. The lawyer came up to Frank Jr. and asked him whom he loved to live with, mom or dad. This situation strained him so much that he left the place, seeking a train ticket to Grand Central. The scene jumps to present, when Carl is about to migrate Frank from the French prison to New York. In a cheap motel, Frank asks Carl when he will be able to call his dad, and also complained about the room he's living in, but Carl said that it is something the FBI can afford for a forger. The scene jumps back to teenage Frank, after leaving home, at a hotel, the hotel manager kicks him out because of his not-so-authentic checks. That frustrated Frank, and he made fraudulent checks which people refused continuously. One day he sees some pilots and flight attendants in New York and gets impressed. He writes a letter to his father to apply for some airlines in hopes of getting selected. He camouflaged himself as a high schooler and start collecting information about pilots from Mr. Morgan. He learns that a pilot needs an airline personnel badge and FAA license. He asked him about his license, and he agreed to copy it into his article. Frank asked him how he could get that ID for Pan American Airways. The man tells him that if he is an actual pilot, he can get the ID for PA. Frank changes his voice and poses as a Pan American co-pilot who wants a new uniform as his old one is lost. For payment, he gave the employee ID and owned the uniform. When he was walking in uniform, people looked at him with admiration. That makes him proud. In the hotel, he fakes a payroll check of $300. He gets accepted into the training program at Pan American Airways and begins to gather toy airplanes so he can use their stickers to make fake checks into legitimate ones. After cashing checks at the airport and posed as a deadhead while getting a jump seat on the plane, he wrote a letter to his father that now, he is earning well and can fly for free to Hawaii for Christmas. He performed the necklace trick with a girl, Marcy, which he learned from his father. Frank lures another counterwoman with his charm and gets the information about the Micker Inc. routing. Frank buys the same machine from an auction. Simultaneously, FBI agent Carl told the officer how Frank changed the routing number of the checks to make varied check frauds and how he made a circle around the state without the banks noticing his fraud. 
officers didn't take the activity seriously. The following day, Frank walked with his dad to a fancy restaurant. He boosts Frank's confidence, and Frank tells him that he's going to Hollywood soon. On the other hand, Carl with his other colleagues went to a motel as they knew that Frank was there. But coincidentally, Frank was still there. Carl burst into Frank's room, pinning his gun to his head. But Frank twisted the whole game by mentioning that he served as a secret service agent named Barry Allen and he is also searching for Frank William Abagnale. Carl asked for his ID, and Frank gave him his wallet, Frank do the same, asking for his ID, as Carl sat down while he gathered all the evidence related to Frank Abagnale. As Carl becomes suspicious about him. It is too late. As he opened the wallet, it was full of stickers, and he was frustrated that Frank had fooled him. After this, Carl ensures his team that he is the only one, who is familiar with Frank's face and voice and now after being fooled by a con man. He is more eager to catch him. In the other scene, Frank, grabbing more info regarding the pilot from Mr. Morgan again. Where he knows about the Skyway man who faked his identity as a pilot. After seeing his story in the newspaper, they called him, James Bond of the Sky. He felt proud to have become a sensation and bought a James Bond suit and an expensive car. At night, Carl received a call from Frank. Frank told him about his location, but Carl refused to go there on Christmas Eve, as everybody's celebrating at that time. And he doesn't want to fool himself again. At a cafe, Carl learns about Barry Allen, a comic book character, which suspects him to think that Frank is a kid, who uses such kind of name. Carl confronts Frank's mother, who has married Jack Barnes. Frank's mother declined his crimes and showed the FBI agents his yearbook, where Carl recognized Frank instantly. Frank's mother told him that she will pay all the money, but she didn't know that Frank's looted around $1.3 million from banks all over the country. Hearing such amount, mother was stunned, becoming speechless. Then, Carl went to Frank's father, who also dismissed Frank's wrongdoings, and denies to tell them anything about Frank. On the other side, Frank meets Brenda and this time, he decides to be a doctor, and fakes his Harvard education degree. Frank now watches medical films to find out the most basic details about his new career and tries to be more accurate while being fake. Later, he called out to examine a kid, and after seeing blood he feels uncomfortable. The following day, Frank met Brenda's parents. He regains her parents' trust and again fakes that he is also a lawyer from Berkeley to win their trust. Frank again watches films to get inspiration as a lawyer. And because of that, he overreacts in the court, and the judge notices what is wrong with the guy. On Christmas Eve, Frank calls Carl and told that he stole $4 million. On that, Carl said that you're going to prison for that. After tracing the call, they know where Frank is. At the wedding, Carl came in and seeing him Frank panicked. Frank rushed to collect every penny, he looted from banks. Frank said all out to Brenda and told her to meet him at Miami International Airport. As Carl's opens the door, he jumped out of the window, and began to run as fast as he can. Carl knows Frank will come to meet Brenda at airport. So, there he plans to catch him at any cost. He thinks this is the last time to catch him. They never came so close to catching him. Frank notices this and is unable to meet Brenda. He brings some women stewardesses to the airport in uniform, and pays a lad, to sit down in a cab with a pilot dress outside the airport to use him as a distraction, which he got success, and with air hostesses, he successfully escaped. Seven months later, he discusses Frank's escape, where they notice that he uses the same ink, uses by the government, they quickly rush to that place located in France, Mont Richard. Carl was right this time, and he successfully finds Frank's whereabouts, catches him red-handed, and warns Frank that he should surrender. Frank gets him arrested, and French police take him up. Carl tells him that soon he will be released. That's where the movie begins. Now, in the present, Carl told Frank on the airplane that his father had died. Makes him sad. Hearing that, he plans to escape, as the plane landed, he escaped and reached his mother's house, seeing his mother, with Barnes, and his little sister. A few moments later, police arrived, and arrest him, sentencing him to 12 years. After spending months in jail, Carl arrived to meet him, and asked for assistance to catch other forger criminals like him. Frank helped, and this goes quite smoothly. Seeing his ability, he got an offer to join the FBI's financial crime unit. This is the chance for him to get rid of jail, and he agrees to join. One day, as he walks around, he notices a pilot suit in a nearby shop. He feels tempted and tries to flee again. But, on his way, Carl catches him, and this time, he frees Frank and told him that nobody is spying on him. He can do whatever he like, but he wants him to get back to work on Monday. Seeing such a gesture, 
He comes back on Monday on time and tries to living an honest life. Later, Frank tells Carl the most asked question about how he passed the bar exam. Frank tells him that he studied for two years to pass it out and ended up living an honest life catching the criminal. After release from prison in 1974, Frank has helped the FBI capture some of the world's most elusive check forgers and counterfeiters. He also designed the most secure check system for the bank that uses by the company every day. Thanks so much for watching. Hope you liked the recap. Please consider like and subscribing our channel for future updates.